In a previous video, I showed how to create editable text effects in Inkscape 1.3, which you guys seem to enjoy, so I thought I'd show you how to use similar techniques to create three additional effects. For the first effect, I'm going to grab the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle for the background. I'll open up the Fill and Stroke dialog and give the rectangle an orange fill. I'm going to click this button to change to a radial gradient, and I'll click this one to reverse the gradient, putting the transparent stop at the center. Now with the transparent stop selected here, I'll raise the alpha channel all the way up and make it closer to white. Alright, for the text, I want to put it on a separate layer above the rectangle's layer, so that I can easily keep the rectangle in the background. To add a new layer, I'll go up to the layer menu and choose add layer. And in here, I just want to make sure the position is set to above current, and now I'll click the add button. Okay, now I'll go to the text tool and create a text object down here for now. The text settings up here don't matter at the moment, but I'll set the style to bold to make everything easier to see. Now I'll grab the select tool and scale up the text object while holding down control to maintain the aspect ratio. For the color, I'll first go to the color picker tool here and choose the orange of the rectangle. Now in the fill and stroke dialog, I'll click this button to give it a linear gradient. Then I'll grab the transparent stop here and raise this alpha channel all the way up. Alright, now I'm going to add a new color stop by double clicking in here near the center of the gradient line. And I'll add two more stops, one on each side of the center one and really close to it. Now I'll grab the center stop and make it completely white. Then I'll grab the last stop here on the right and make it magenta. I'm now going to copy the RGBA value here. Then I'll grab the stop just to the right of the center one. And I'll replace this RGBA value with the one I copied. Alright, now I'll go over here to the gradient tool and change up the rotation angle of the gradient. Alright, to start adding some effects to the text object, I'm going to open up the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects. And the first thing I'll do in here is click the Clone button to create a clone of the text object. And with the clone now selected, I'll come up here and add the Offset Path Effect to it. With the Offset Path Effect added to it, I can grab the Node tool, then use this orange circular handle to offset the clone. Alright, and I actually want to make this clone white, but at the moment, if I show the settings for the clone original path effect here, among other things, the clone is currently copying the original text object style, which includes its fill and stroke properties. So in order to give the clone its own style, I first need to delete the word style in here along with a comma after it and press enter. And now I can switch over to the fill and stroke dialog and make it white. I also want to put the clone beneath the original text object, which I can do by activating the Select tool and clicking the Lower to Bottom button up here. Now I'm able to select the original text object here. Alright, next I want to create a duplicate of the clone, so I need to select the clone again. To select an object that's underneath another one, I can hold down the Alt key and click the top object. And now I have the clone selected, as I can see in the Path Effects dialog. Alright, and to duplicate the clone, I can either click this button up here, or I can use the shortcut Ctrl D. I'm going to make this one black, and I'll lower its opacity to about 60%. Now I'll move it down and to the right a bit, and send it to the bottom. Okay, now I want to duplicate the first clone again, so I'm going to select the original text object at the top, then hold Alt and click it again to select the clone. And I'll duplicate the clone with Ctrl D. I'll give this one a dull reddish fill. Now I'll give it a linear gradient, make the transparent stop here fully opaque, and change it to a dark purple. I want this gradient to be vertical, so I'll go to the gradient tool, grab the first stop here, and move it to the top. Then I'll grab the other stop, hold control to snap the angle, and move it to the bottom. Alright, now I'll go to the select tool, and send this clone to the bottom. Then I'll grab the node tool, and offset it some more. If I don't see the orange handle here, I have to go to the Path Effects dialog and make sure I have the Offset Path Effects settings visible in here. 
Alright, now I'm going to duplicate this clone by pressing Ctrl D. Now I'll go to the Fill and Stroke dialog, and I'm going to give this clone the same gradient as the original text object by clicking the Gradient List button here and choosing this one. But for this one, I just want it to be a straight orange to magenta gradient, so I'm going to remove the three center stops. To do this, I'll select them one at a time and press Delete. Okay, now I'll grab the Select tool and send this clone to the bottom, then use the Node tool to offset it some more. Okay, now I'm going to select all of these text objects and I'll move them onto the background rectangle. And I can resize everything if I want. Finally, I'll add a shadow between the text and the background. To do this, I'll first duplicate one of the clones. It doesn't really matter which one, so I'll just grab the one in the back here and press Ctrl D. I'll make it black, blur it a bit, and lower its opacity. Then I'll move it down and to the right some, and send it to the bottom. Alright, the effect is finished, so now I can grab the original text object here at the top and use the text tool to change up some things. If the last character doesn't show up in the clones like this, I can add a blank space to the end of the text, then delete the space. For the font, I'll go with Baloo. And I'll set the alignment to Centered. And if I want, I can still come in here and adjust some things, like the offsets of these clones. And that concludes the first text effect. For the next effect, I've started up a new Inkscape document. I recommend that you do the same, because having a lot of path effects and things in one document can slow down Inkscape quite a bit. Alright, for this one, we'll go with a neon effect. Like with the previous one, I'll start by creating a background rectangle. I'll keep the fill as black, but raise up the opacity to 100%. Now I'll give it a radial gradient, reverse it, and make the center stop a dark gray. Okay, now I'm going to add a layer above this one. Then I'll create a text object. For the font, I'll choose something with thick letters, like Montserrat. And I'll set the style to heavy. I'll also go ahead and set the alignment to centered. Now I'll use the select tool to scale it up. Alright, for the color of the text, I actually want to turn off the fill by clicking the X here. Now I'll go to the stroke paint tab and click this button to give it a linear gradient stroke. The stroke might look a little crazy at the moment, but we'll fix that later. For now, I'll give it a rainbow gradient. I'll set the first stop here to red. For the last stop, I'll raise the alpha channel all the way up and make it magenta. Now I'll add another stop in here and make it yellow. Then I'll add one more stop over here and make it cyan. I also want the stroke width to be pretty thin, so I'll go to the stroke style tab and decrease it a bit. That should work. Alright, now to fix the stroke, I'll switch over to the path effects dialog and click the clone button, and I'll move the clone off the original for the moment. Now I'm going to add the offset path effect to the clone. Then I'll grab the node tool. And all I have to do is slightly adjust the offset handle. Now the stroke looks much better. I want to align these objects back up again, so I'll select them both. Then open up the align and distribute dialog and click both the align vertically button and the align horizontally button. Now I'll select just the clone, which is currently on top, and I'll send it to the bottom. Alright, now if I click here again to select the original text object, what I want to do now is make the text object invisible. However, if I lower its opacity right now, because the clone is copying its style, it also lowers the clone's opacity. So I'll raise it back up. To fix this, I'll first select the clone by holding Alt and clicking the text object stroke. Now I'll switch over to the path effects dialog. In the clone original settings, the only part of the original object style that I want to copy is a stroke. To do this, I'll type the word stroke into the CSS properties box here and press enter. Then in the attributes box, 
I will remove the word style along with the comma after it and press enter. This unsets the fill color of the clone which makes it appear black. So now I need to go to the fill tab of the fill and stroke dialog and click the X here to turn off its fill color. Alright now if I select the original text object here and lower its opacity, it shouldn't affect the clone at all. Okay, next I want to duplicate the clone. So first I'll hold Alt and click the text object stroke to select the clone, then press Ctrl D to duplicate it. For this clone, I'll go to the stroke style tab and increase the stroke width a bit. Changing the stroke width of the clone works because adding the word stroke to the CSS properties box in the clone original settings actually only copies the original object's stroke color, not its stroke width. Alright, now I'm also going to blur this clone a bit, as well as lower its opacity to about 75%. And finally, I'll send the clone to the bottom. Okay, now I'll duplicate the currently selected clone by pressing Ctrl D, and I'll increase its stroke width some more, as well as increase the blur, and lower the opacity to about 50%. Then I'll send it to the bottom. Alright, now I'm going to select all of the text and move it onto the background rectangle. One more thing I'll do is add a shadow between the text and the background. For this, I'll select the first clone by clicking the original text object, then holding down Alt and clicking on the stroke. And I'll duplicate it with Ctrl D. I want to make the stroke color of this one black. So first, I need to stop it from copying the original object's stroke. To do this, I'll go to the clone original path effects settings, remove the word stroke in here, and press enter. Now I can change the color to black. I also want to raise up the stroke width quite a bit. And I'll also blur it some and lower its opacity. Now I'll move it down and to the right some. Okay, now I'm going to lower it to the bottom of the stack, but I'm also going to click the raise button here to put it just above the bottom color clone. Alright, now I can edit the text however I want. Also because the color clones are copying the original text object's stroke color, changing its stroke color will change it for the clones as well. For the final effect, we'll give the text a rough, fuzzy, or frosty look. And I'll start by creating a background rectangle with a white to blue radial gradient fill. Alright, for the text, I'll first create a new layer above this one. Then I'll create a text object. I'm going to use Pacifico for the font and center the alignment. Then I'll scale it up. And for the color, I'll first make it a light blue. Then I'll give it a linear gradient, raise up the alpha channel of the transparent stop, and make it closer to white. And I'll use the gradient tool to make the gradient vertical. This is pretty hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and move it onto the background. Okay, next, I'll go over to the Path Effects dialog and create a clone of the text object. The first thing I want to do with this clone is offset it a bit, so I'll add the offset path effect to it, then go to the Node tool and drag out the offset handle. Alright, now I'm going to add the roughen path effect to it. This roughens up the edges of the object. And I can come in here and adjust some of the settings if I want. I usually just click these randomize buttons until I get something I like. Okay, and at the moment, the clone is on top of the original text object, so I'll move it to the bottom. It doesn't appear that anything has happened, but that's only because the clone is using the same colors as the text object here. Alright, I want to duplicate the clone, so I'll hold down Alt and click the text object to select the clone, then I'll press Ctrl D. I want to be able to change the color of this one, so I'll go into the settings of the clone original path effect, and in the attributes box, I'll delete the word style here along with the comma after it and press enter. Now I'll just give it a flat sky blue fill. Okay, now I'll move it down and to the left a bit, then send it to the bottom. 
Alright, now I'll duplicate the light blue clone with Control D and make it a bit darker. I'll move it down and to the left and send it to the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to duplicate this dark blue clone and I'm going to move this one so it's just down and to the left of the very first clone I created. Now up here, I'll click the lower button twice to put it below the original text object and the first clone. Now I'll go into the fill and stroke dialog and give it a slight blur. Finally for a shadow, I'll duplicate the currently selected clone, make it black, bring it down and to the left of all of the other objects, send it to the bottom, and adjust the blur and opacity. That should do it for the final text object and this video. Thanks for watching.